what we would consider a, a um, foot-shaped shoe. Of course, pointed shoes are, are not, and that's where patients can sometimes develop problems with bunions and hammer toes and the things that we've been uh, talking about thus far. Um, so uh, the, the problem with gym shoes is that they are made mostly from man-made fibers, um, from non-natural fibers. Uh, that's not always true, but it is largely so. And of course, that makes the foot uh, more prone to sweating, um, which, as we indicated before, can, can make it more prone or, or make it easier for uh, fungus certainly to grow on the skin, uh, which can produce problems with athlete's foot, for example. Um, but they are an extremely healthy type of shoe and they usually have, um, or at least they're, they're healthy from the standpoint of foot shape. They also have a, a lace which makes them a very uh, good shoe in terms of stabilizing the foot in the shoe. Um, leather shoes which have some sort of mechanism to hold the foot in the shoe such as a lace or a strap or a bar can also be very healthy. Uh, some leather shoes have very good insoles in them as well which help to uh, su support the arch area which is also uh, necessary for good foot function. Um, but of course gym shoes very often come with an insole of some description typically because uh, these are shoes that are going to be used for more sporting type of issues and um, patients may wish to take those insoles that come in the shoe out and put in perhaps a custom made type of uh, filler for the arch which they uh, have either been prescribed by their um, doctor or they may have an over the counter type of insole which they have in fact purchased. Um, so there are a number of healthy choices out there. As, a po as, as for, you'd asked about which brand is, is best, we don't uh, necessarily want to recommend one brand is better over, the, over another. There are many good brands of um, gym shoe out there, but if you, if you don't want to wear a gym shoe, the kind of shoe that I think you perhaps ought to be thinking about looking for is a shoe which has at least a leather upper. In other words, the top part of the shoe is made from leather. It has a lace and it has a rounded area for, the, for where the toe um, or the toes fit into the shoe. And that will typically give one, I, I think, a, a fairly um, healthy basic framework. Uh, you need to have cushioning in the <coughs> heel, of course, uh, to, to help lessen the heel strike as the foot strikes onto the ground when, when one walks. Uh, but those are the, are the basic things you should be looking for. I should point out that um, you can get a list of recommended shoes from the American Podiatric Medical Association, which is Correct. our parent um, society, and that, that website is uh, apma.net. And there's a button on the website where you can click to get other um, uh, a whole list of uh, recommended foot, foot care products. So let's move down the foot to the heel area, and uh, we've got about five minutes. Um, um, to talk about uh, plantar fasciitis and heel spurs. So you've got another model sure. that's, I think, a little bit more appropriate for that. Okay. So plantar fasciitis is probably one of the more common conditions that uh, walks into our office. And I think uh, anybody who's in practice will probably say that they treat many patients each week with this particular sure. condition. Yeah. Um, plantar fasciitis is uh, basically something where the ligament which helps to form the arch of the foot, there's a, a tight ligament or band called the plantar fascia. It runs from the point of the heel bone here where my finger is up to the ball of the foot here. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically what we think happens is because of continual pounding or striking of the foot on the ground, it causes a chronically inflamed area on the bottom of the heel. Mm -hmm. And where the fascia or this sort of ligamentous structure which connects the heel to the ball of the foot fixes onto the heel bone down here, there's a tremendous amount of strain and pulling mm -hmm. and the area gets chronically inflamed and becomes painful. Now, Typically, the most pain seems to occur when, when patients get out of bed, mm -hmm. first thing. And this is probably because during sleeping hours, the uh, ligament itself, the actual fascia, begins to tighten or shorten. And then, of course, as we put our foot down onto the ground, mm -hmm. the ligament stretches under the weight of the foot, sure. and it produces more pulling and pain mm -hmm. where it attaches to the heel bone right. back here. So that's basically what plantar fasciitis is. Um, as I say, it's a very common condition. Mm -hmm. It's something we see, actually are seeing more and more of, and sure. that's partly because people are more active today. Mm -hmm. um, despite the fact they're probably wearing healthier shoes in many ways, mm -hmm. uh, it's still people are more active. 
pounding on hard street surfaces. So, so mm -hmm. this is what creates it. Now, fortunately, this is something that can be very successfully treated without surgery. Certainly, mm -hmm. surgery right. is not a first-line treatment for this condition. And very often, um, when patients are first seen, they'll be uh, given uh, stretching exercises which have been shown through various research studies to work very well, they may well be given a custom-made foot uh, insole or insert to wear in mm -hmm. the shoe. This will help to um, elevate the arch and take some tension off the ligament itself, so that can be very helpful. Mm -hmm. Very often they'll be given some physical therapy, either the doctor will send them to a physical therapist or they will be given some exercises they can perform at, at home as right. part of a stretching uh, program. And if, and if those don't work, so they do work on most people, but in, very the, often in the few people that don't, right. what, what and, typically do you recommend? And we're, we're talking about a relatively small mm -hmm. percentage right. of patients here. Um, the, the two major procedures that are performed involve basically cutting part of this ligament on the uh, mm -hmm. bottom of the foot. It, it's called a uh, partial plantar fasciectomy, mm -hmm. which means that, that the ligament is partially cut where it actually uh, attaches to the heel bone here. Mm -hmm. And this helps to relieve some tension on the actual ligament itself. Mm -hmm. um, this again can be done as an outpatient type of procedure. Uh, patients are able to walk actually very quickly mm -hmm. after the surgery mm -hmm. in a special walking boot and um, they do quite well. The other type of surgery involves using a tiny little camera, something called an en endoscope. Mm -hmm. And we make a tiny little cut on the side of the foot and we can introduce a camera into the foot itself. Mm -hmm and on the opposite side of the actual camera lens we introduce a little knife mm -hmm. and we can cut part of that ligament very carefully yeah. and again this allows the patient to walk with less tension on that uh, okay. ligamentous structure. Both of those surgeries podiatric surgeons have been doing for a number of years mm -hmm. and um, they work they work well but again it's not a first-line treatment. Okay well I think we have to have you come back because I, I think we only covered about half the things that we wanted to get through because we got so many calls today which is great because um, there's so much th more that we want to talk about and right. we have to go now but we're going to be back in May and uh, maybe later this year you or one of your colleagues can come back and talk about some of the other surgical procedures that um, we didn't get to but for those of you out there that need a uh, podiatrist you need a referral again the 800 number on your screen there or the website ipma.net and uh, you can get some resources there thanks and we'll see you next month thank you Chris